Welcome back, everybody. Time for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and time for another viewer su suggestion on a scenario. And this one comes from Dom Tiago the First, uh, who uh, I believe must be from Brazil. And he apologized for his English, but it's actually, Dom, your English is perfect. It's, it's outstanding. I want to read to you the scenario and then explain to you what we've decided to do as far as uh, the year and everything goes. So here's what he said. He said, it's 1889 and the Empire of Brazil under the leadership of Peter II is engulfed in a civil war. The Imperial Army under the command of Marshal De uh, Deodoro has rebelled against the Empire and attempted a coup to end the monarchy and install a Republican government. While the Imperial Navy under the uh, command of Admiral Tamandare swore loyalty to the Emperor. After the Battle of Rio de Janeiro, the Republicans managed to install their first state and got a, ho got a hold of a handful of ships, and now the emperor sent the fleet uh, of Pernambuco under the command uh, of Temendare to crush the rebellion. You must pick a side and be ready for a long war. So I believe Dom Tiago has meant this to be a multi-part scenario. Uh, and here's what he said. He said the imperial fleet is enclosed of, uh, composed of one 16,500-ton battleship, two heavy cruisers, two torpedo boats. The Republican fleet, a fleet is composed of one battleship and one battle cruiser. Now, the first issue that we have is that in order to get a year, the earliest year possible where torpedo boats and battle cruisers are available, actually the earliest year where battle cruisers are available, is 1907. Uh, we can't get battle cruisers sooner than that. Uh, and I thought it would be, if I went down to a heavy cruiser, it might be too difficult. Um, so, I mean, the option would be to go to 1890 and maybe do two battleships. Uh, so I'll have to think about that for a minute. Maybe that's what we'll do to keep the, the time frame uh, in the right way. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, one battleship, two heavy cruisers, two torpedo boats against two battleships. That's how we'll have to make this happen. So if you play as the Empire of Brazil, he says that's British Empire. Uh, the Republican fleet will be uh, the, the French Empire. Uh, so playing as the Empire of Brazil, uh, a Tamandari class battleship with 16,500 tons, speed of 15 and a half to 17 and a half, medium range, standard bulkheads, triple expansion steam engine fueled by cool or semi oil, uh, natural boils, boiler nickel steel armor, barbette one. He's given me all the details. So I'm going to go ahead and just punch all this stuff in, including all of the armor specifications that he's given me. He's given me exactly what we need to build here. I'll make it happen. Okay, so we had to go up to 1900 for the year in order to get some of these specifications because things like triple expansion, steam engine, uh, 16,500 tons for a battleship, those were not available uh, in 1890. So we've gone up and kind of found a happy medium here. Okay, these are the speci specifications I was given. And so I'll assume that anything else that wasn't specified is up to me. Uh, coal fuel, uh, he said, or semi-oil, but semi-oil is not available. Natural boilers is what we have to have. Kind of stinks, but that's what we have. So uh, nickel steel armor, barbette one, standard bulkheads, uh, standard reloading. He said 16-inch torpedoes, but those are not available. Only 17 and 18, so that's what we've gone with. Um, he did say coincidence rangefinder. Here are the uh, armor specifications as they were given to me exactly. Uh, let me double check the deck extended because I don't remember reading that one. Yeah, two, two point five and two. So we got that. Uh, he said either two twelves uh, on each side or two tens. So I'll go with the twelves. Uh, beyond that, on oh, then he said no more than three torpedo tubes. So I put one on the front and one on each side. So we've got a total of three of those. Beyond that, oh he he did say casemates are up to me as many as I want. Um, the enemy though has a battleship or two battleships so the three inch barrels aren't going to do me any good there's no need to waste anything on that so the rest is up to me we're going to go with the best front tower we can get same with the best secondary tower we're going to need as many funnels as we can get because of the issue with the kind of boilers that we have uh, i don't know if two funnels is going to be enough for this let's take a look oh we are slow so i guess so um, yeah, we'll, we'll need two though. So there's two funnels. We've got a bit of a four weight offset. Uh, we can choose. Mm, I don't know about lidite. I don't want to end up getting exploded. I think I'm going to go with ballastite. Uh, he didn't say anything about the turrets, so we'll go with that. 
Uh, also, I'm not too worried about anti-torpedo, uh, but I do want to get double hull bottom. Let's definitely get the protected deck anti-flood as best we can. And that leaves a little bit of room, but I think everything else is restricted to what he gave me. So that's where we've got to stop. Uh, we've got a bit of a four weight offset. I'm not too worried about that. I think it should be okay. Maybe we can throw a couple of casemate guns. Uh, we don't even have any spots for them. Really. Throw these on the back end just to balance that weight out a little bit. All right, let's do this. So here are the conditions that he gave to me. And it says, sink the rebel fleet in under three hours or else their reinforcements will overpower you. You get 25 points if you sink the battlecruiser and 70 points if you sink the battleship. So I guess we're making this a lot harder by going with two battleships. Five points for every 20 minutes saved. You lose five points if you lose a torpedo boat, 15 if you lose a heavy cruiser, and you lose the battle if the battleship is sunk. The battleship must fight, and if you win, you get a battlecruiser in the next battle. All right, here we go. So this is definitely going to be interesting. You know, accuracy is a major issue at this time. Uh, we're starting, I think, at 15,000 meters, so we're definitely going to have to close from that if we're going to have a chance. Where are my heavy cruisers? Anybody see my heavy? Oh, there they are. <laughs> um, so I'm actually going to put these heavy cruisers in line with the battleship. Although I want the battleship to be first. So that's... Uh, detach. There. Uh, it doesn't seem like I, I'm having a lot of success here with making it go my way. So we'll just get them in a follow order. Tell them to follow the Tamandare. The torpedo boats, on the other hand, are set to screen right now. Now, the problem with torpedoes at this time is the range. you got to get within 1.5 kilometers to be able to use them. And uh, that means getting really close to his big guns. So that's what we're going to have to do. And I don't know how much the torpedoes are going to do, but I feel like that's the only way that the torpedo boats can be of any service. But hopefully the accuracy of the battleship keeps him from being able to nail my torpedo boats. All right. Forget screening. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll let's see what they do on their own with a screen order. We've only got 398 12-inch shells. And obviously, accuracy at this point is worthless. Let me see how big this thing is. No, we can't tell yet. I don't even see the other one. He's back there somewhere. I feel like those are bigger than 12-inch guns, though. Yeah, they're 13s. Okay. And he's already got a hit on me. All right, torpedo boats, get in there and get a torpedo on this guy while he's distracted with my big guns. So we're going to have to slow down to 14 and see if that gets us a cruise speed bonus. Oh, uh, now he's firing on the torpedo boats. Get in there, Ranger. They've only got three torpedoes. So they may only get one shot at this. Hope they don't miss. What did he hit? No, oh, it was one of my cruisers that got hit. Yeah, we've got a close range, but we got to make sure that we're not too close to both of the ships at the same time. Oh, there's already a big shot on the torpedo boat. Get in there and drop your torpedo. There you go. Let's hope he nails this. Oh, he's got some coming back at him. This 
gonna be close. That torpedo's just moving too slow. Okay, I think we got him. Come on, baby, move faster. Might hit him in the rudder and cause some rudder damage. Nice, nice job. Other torpedo boat, Cobra, I'm not sure they're gonna get in there and get one. How much flooding? Okay, we caused flooding on three compartments. Certainly not enough for a sinking. Heavy cruisers probably aren't going to be able Well, they got 8 inch guns. They might have some success. Alright, Cobra. Get your torpedo in the water. Wow, that caused more flooding than I expected for three compartments. What's he got as far as... Minimum bulkheads, that's why. And he's actually smaller than me, 14,000 tons. So we might be able to get some flooding damage on this guy. If we get a, if we can get a torpedo to hit him in the front. Actually, I'd prefer the uh, Cobra fired on this other battleship. Dang. Turned right into him, guys. Are you serious? Get your torpedoes off or this is over with. Come on, Cobra. Oh, they didn't even get their torpedoes in the water. And they went right at those torpedoes. Unreal. Alright, we're going to go toward this one. Thankfully his two battleships are going in opposite directions. And there goes the Ranger. So this may be my chance to try and knock one of them out. Uh, I gotta be careful here. Because now I'm, I'm heading straight at one of them, but I'm broadside to the other. I just need to nail him. Nah, he got all the flooding out of one compartment. I need to get at least probably three more, maybe two more compartments flooded. Ouch. That really hurt. Please tell me he didn't take out. He did. He took out my rear gun. I'm down to just two guns. Got a torpedo going at him though, and it's gonna hit him in the front, which is exactly oh no it's not. It's gonna hit him where he's already flooded. No, we got three more compartments. That might be enough. Four more. He's done. He's done, and so am I. No! He came straight at me with two torpedoes. I was so excited about watching him sink that I didn't even realize he was putting some in the water too. Ah, oh, This might go fast. Come on, baby. Come on, pumps. Get on top of this. There you go. I may barely survive those torpedoes. I just don't know if I got enough left to take out another battleship. Wow. That's the problem with having to get that close on the range for torpedoes is there's just no time to dodge. He's going at my cruisers now. I definitely got to keep my front facing him as much as possible. I have no speed now. I just don't know if I can turn fast enough. Man, I, my aim is terrible at this point. I have to keep turning. I don't want him to get a chance to hit me in the rear. I don't know if I can get close enough to hit him with a torpedo, though. Come 
Come on, pumps, keep doing your thing. Oh, uh, 40% damage instability hit on my accuracy. That might not be possible to overcome on a relatively healthy ship. We're slowly repairing though. You can see that damage instability number coming down. I just have to keep turning toward him so he doesn't get me broadside. Because I have... I can't fire with my rear gun. I can't let him hit me in the rear. Do my cruisers have torpedoes? They do. Alright, let's do this. Let's get after him. With those cruisers. Just keep this guy turning, because he's just circling me. As long as I can keep up with this and stay facing him, he's going to have a hard time sinking. Sinking me. I feel like he's starting to get ahead, though. I'm going to head this way to try and catch up to him. Yeah, see, as long as I can keep this up, he'll get a lot of ricochets. Man, I'm just not getting hits, though. How are we doing on repairs? We're down to just 30% damage instability inaccuracy. Meanwhile, we're trying to get these cruisers over here. So we can get a couple torpedoes in the water and give him another target to shoot at. Fires are doing some damage. Maybe we can get really lucky. He's got minimal bulkheads. Maybe we can get a ammo detonation. Got a lot of shells. Fires are raging. They've got him down to 53% and still going down. They were at 70 a second ago. Down to 44%. Those fires might not stop. Maybe I'm better off to keep my cruisers at a distance. And just let the fires finish them off. And it looks like they're slowing down. Yep, he got the fires out. Okay. I don't know where the torpedo tubes are on these things. But let's hope we can get one in the water before he blows Hawk away. Oh boy. Ah, oh, jeez. Those things have been the bane of my existence. Two of them. But I got one on him. I'm going to lose a cruiser to sink his second battleship. But I think it worked. Nicely done, Hawk. Your kamikaze mission may have saved us. It did. All right, so we get out of here barely with the battleship and a heavy cruiser. We lost both torpedoes and one of our heavy cruisers. Um, so let me take a look and see where that puts us in terms of points. Okay, so looking at the replay back here, uh, it took us 45 minutes to do everything. Uh, so if we round down to uh, round it to one hour, that leaves two hours. Um, you get five points for every 20 minutes saved uh, in the three hours. So that would be an additional 30 points. Uh, for the two hours. I get 25 points for sinking the battle cruiser in 70. Uh, technically, I sank two battleships, so that would be 140. That would be 
170 points. All right. So uh, there you have it. I don't know what the points mean necessarily. That's up to Dom Tiago to decide. But Dom Tiago, hope you enjoyed that. Sorry I had to tweak it a little bit to make it work within the game. But thank you for giving me such specifics and giving us a little background into uh, some, something that maybe not a lot of us know about, which is what was going on in Brazil at that time. As far as I understand, there was uh, not necessarily a civil war, but there was a coup d'etat um, in 1889, which is when the republic was established. So I think it's within that framework that uh, Dom uh, Tiago was giving us his scenario. And it was a good one. And it, it has caused me to go and, and do a little research into what was happening in Brazil in that time. So I'm going to be reading up on that for the next couple of hours. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your scenarios if you have one. Uh, lots of ways to do that. You can email me at thehistoryguy25 at gmail.com. Send it to me as a private message on Discord or leave it in the comment section below. Drop a like if you would. We'll see you again with another episode tomorrow. Thanks for watching.